instead of paying taxes first, you actually make expenses first. And that's another tax hack that real estate investors use. And by the way, for these businesses, we are a revenue generating machine. That is also a tax write-off because that's what a salary is. But me attending a business conference for two days lets me write off the entire trip. I was able to literally write off that entire trip and it's all legal. That's exactly how investing can save you taxes. How can he be making $56 billion in a year and pay zero taxes? Elon Musk might be the wealthiest person in the world, but he pays zero dollars in taxes. Want to know how? My name is Navjot and I'm on a mission to retire 1 million immigrants with $5 million. So if you are new to this channel, do subscribe and join me in my mission. Without further ado, let's get started. So in today's presentation, we'll be talking about how to pay less taxes legally. How do billionaires pay no taxes? And again, they do it legally. We'll talk about how are we taxed in a job versus business because that's a big part of paying no taxes or less taxes. Finally, we'll talk about how can investing save you and me a lot of tax even if you don't own a business. Last week, the board of directors in Tesla announced that Elon Musk will be receiving $56 billion in compensation, which is his pay package, which is more than Tata Motors. That's for the headline, say, you know, annual revenue. That's a lot of money, but yet he'll be paying zero dollars in taxes. And Elon Musk is, as per this article, and we know that, you know, a lot of billionaires actually pay zero taxes. So now let's try and understand how can he be making $56 billion in a year and pay zero taxes. Now I'm taking the example of Elon Musk because he's the richest man in the world, but every billionaire does that. Every even multi-millionaire would do that. And I'll just, you know, explain you how it's done. Now, $56 billion that he's getting, it's not all in cash. It's He's not drawing a salary. He doesn't get all that money in salary. He, in fact, makes almost $0 in salary. And that's the reason why he does not pay any salary tax. But what this $56 billion is, is stock options. So it's paper that he's getting. On paper, he's getting $56 billion worth of shares of Tesla and not really money in his account. Now, the question is that how is Elon Musk able to afford a lifestyle using just paper? Because stock is nothing but paper. It's not real money that you can buy groceries off. And what he's doing is he's actually going to his bank with the $56 billion of stock options and asking them for debt. It will basically be a secured loan against his stocks. Now, most of the stock that Elon Musk has is either at $6 or lower. And right now, the stock price is over $170. So the bank has a lot of security if they give Elon Musk debt against his stock options. And that's exactly what's happening. He is, let's say, and this is just a number that I'm taking, you know, off my head. Let's say he takes $100 million of debt from the bank against his stock options. And this is against his $200 billion of net worth, of which almost $100 billion is in Tesla stocks. And he's only taking $100 million. Now, $100 million of debt is a lot of debt for you and me, but for a person who has $200 billion of net worth, it's nothing. Now, because the bank is lending him the money, it's actually debt. You cannot tax anyone on debt. But yes, he'll be paying an interest on that. Let's say it's anywhere between 3 to 5%. Let's take 5% for now. And he'll be paying on this $100 million, $5 million per year of interest. But he has $100 million. And if you were to take him, take that $100 million as a salary, he'll be paying a lot more than that. So yes, he's paying $5 million per year of interest. And then he's securing that interest and the debt with life insurances. It's very, very complicated but $5 million in context of $100 million in context of $200 billion of net worth is absolutely nothing. Let's say the stock price of Tesla goes up by 1%. His $56 billion of compensation actually increases by another half a million dollars. And the debt that he's taking and the interest that he's paying on that debt is nothing compared to 1% increase in the stock. That's how easy it is for billionaires to pay $0 in taxes. And honestly, unless Tesla is to go down to $0 tomorrow, there's no way in hell that Elon Musk can ever be broke again. Now that was Elon Musk, but that doesn't work for you and me. So now let me explain what works for you and me in the normal person where either people are doing a job or they are doing business and how taxes work on both these things. So let's talk about salary business and then let's talk about business. So now if you are in a salary, it's very simple. The first step is that you get a gross income, but that doesn't hit your bank account because first there are taxes that you need to pay, the federal tax, the provincial tax if you're in Canada, and there are deductions like CPP and EI, and then you get a net income in your bank account. 
And with that net income, we have to make expenses, we have to make mortgage payment, car payment, we have to buy groceries, shopping, everything has to come out of the net income that we generate after taxes. Now in business, things work a little bit different. You first make income, which is the gross income. Let's say you make $100,000 of gross income. I'll take an example here as well. But that entire $100,000 hits your bank account. And then you make expenses. So this order of paying taxes and expenses is reversed when you are in a business. Instead of paying taxes first, you actually make expenses first and then you pay taxes. And that's the reason why you actually pay less taxes as a business. Now, let me give you an example. So let's say you have a salary of $100,000 a year. The federal tax on that is $14,000. The provincial tax is $7,000. Overall, you pay about $21,000, $22,000 in taxes. Then you have CPP and EI, which is about $4,700 on this. And then the net income that you are left with is 27% lower, more or less. And then you have to make expenses, which is your grocery and all that good stuff. Then we have a business, let's say it makes the same exact money, $100,000. Then you have business expenses like car payments, team events, community events, rent, travel, camera equipment, courses, books, the mic that I have bought. Now, I recently made a trip to Muskoka where the entire team was meeting and planning for the next year. I was able to literally write off that entire trip and it's all legal. Similarly, I have a car and 50% of the time I'm actually using to commute for work and therefore that becomes a tax write-off as well. I have spent about $30,000 this year on my learning, taking mentorship programs and masterminds and all that is a write-off again. I am going to Vegas next month and that trip will also be a write-off because I'm attending a conference by Alex Hermosi. Now, Vegas is really nice and I would have gone there anyways, but me attending a business conference for two days lets me write off the entire trip. That's the beauty of business. After we deduct our business expenses from the gross income, we get net income and we are only taxed 12.2%. 2% on this net income because that's the tax rate that you have in a corporation and I only pay $6,100 in taxes which is less than one third of what you would pay if you had a salary. Now you might be wondering that overall if I look at this equation the net income that I have is about $73,000 but here I have expenses and that actually leaves me with $50,000 and then I pay $6,100 and overall I actually keep a lot less but that's not true because all these expenses are actually contributing to my success in the next year. I'll give you an example. So let's say I do a community event in December. I actually did Grow Nation event last year. I spent about $50,000 on that event, but that gave me more business this year because all my clients were there and all those clients would buy their second properties and that would give me more repeat business and that would mean that I make more revenue next year. I more than make up for the $50,000 that I spent on my business, but on that particular year, it was a write-off. And then I again do this event this year and then write off that income and then make more money next year. And then I do a bigger event and then I make more money next year. So because of the single change of paying taxes after expenses, instead of paying them before that we do in a job. So all these expenses will actually increase my revenue for next year and I can keep more money. However, when we have a salary, when we have expenses, this ex these expenses actually do not contribute to our income in future. And we are dependent on our salary hike from our business. And by the way, for these businesses, we are a revenue generator machine that is also a tax write-off because that's what a salary is. Now I understand that not everyone can do a business, can start a business, can sustain a business. Not everyone's situation is the same and for them we have RRSP, we have other tax cycles. I've made a video on that. I'll link that in the description. Do watch the video to see as a salaried individual how can you save taxes. Now keeping that aside, if you are a salaried individual and in fact if you're in business you can actually use investing as a way to pay less taxes. Let me explain that. Let's say you have a gross income again of $150,000 per year coming from your salary again. You have federal tax, you have provincial tax, you have CPP and EI, and overall you keep about $102,000. So you pay $48,000 in taxes and deductions. Versus someone who has a gross income against salaried of $100,000 per year, but he is also generating $50,000 a year in capital gains. Now in most cases, these capital gains are coming from either selling stocks or real estate. So this individual made the same amount of money, which is $150,000, but let's calculate the amount of taxes that this individual pays. So the federal tax will be about $20,000, which will be an entire $6,000 lower. The provincial tax will also be lower. The CPP and EI will almost be the same. The net income that they keep is more than $10,000 more if you were only earning a salary. And the reason why this happens is because on capital gains, you're only taxed on 50% of gains. So you're not being taxed on the entire 100% of what you gained. So you're only taxed on 50% of 50,000, which is $25,000. And that gets added to the income and you pay a tax on that which is exactly how in the second case, 
this person was able to save $10,000 in taxes. Now, by the way, you can do all these calculations yourself as well. I link this in the description, the calculator, it's from Wealth Simple. It's a really good calculator. You can do all these calculations. And you know, if you want to check my calculations, you can do that as well. But let's say your gross income is $0 and you have only capital gains. That's what flippers do. That's what, you know, people who are doing burr strategies do. Now, there is anti-flipping law available, but you can buy it in corporation. There are many, many ways of, you know, still, um, you know, safeguarding your taxes there. However, let's say you are someone who is a real estate investor they buy they renovate and sell after one or two years and you make a hundred and fifty thousand dollar capital gain every single year and you don't have a salary in that case your taxes will be even lower you'll not have to pay any cpp and ei and you will keep a lot more money almost 30 to 32 thousand dollars more if you had the same amount in salary. That's exactly how investing can save you taxes. Now, this was any investing. Let's talk about real estate and why I love real estate. I'll give you a tax advantage of that. Let's say you're buying this house for $450,000. There's an upstairs, which is three by two bath. There's a basement, but it does not have a kitchen. So, you, you know, it's a finished basement, but with one bath. This is in Calgary, by the way. Um, you know, this is a real house that sold for like 448 or four, you know, 447, something like that. The reno cost on this one is about $40,000. Expected rent is about $4,000 from upstairs and down shares taken together uh, let's do and let's analyze this particular deal you know as is let's say the purchase price was four hundred fifty thousand dollars the down payment is ninety thousand dollars and the closing cost is two thousand dollars there is renovations required of forty thousand dollars the holding cost because you'll need about three months of holding cost till the time the renovations is complete and you're able to rent it out that's about six thousand dollars the cash upfront required is one hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars including the renovations and the holding cost and everything. The mortgage on this one will be 2371. I've taken a 7% interest rate. The interest rate will be a lot lower than this, but I do conservative estimates always. The net operating expenses, which includes the property manager, the maintenance, the property taxes, all those expenses that you have, insurance, you know, all that comes to about $900. And the total expenses on this one will be just north of 3250. The rent from this one is $4,000. So you are able to make on day one cash flow of $714. Calgary doesn't have rent control. So let's say you increase the rent by $200 next year and the cash flow increases to $900 year three will be 4,500 the cash flow increases to over $1,000 and because we did renovations worth $40,000 we were able to increase the value of the property to almost $580,000 by just doing $40,000 of renovations so essentially a $450,000 house is now worth close to $600,000 because we forced appreciation into it now, just as a side note, because a lot of people do not have the $40,000 to put into renovation and that's what stops them from making these kind of, you know, uh, deals. Uh, you can borrow this $40,000 at 12% interest rate from your unsecured line of credit. You will be paying about $400 per month. You will be keeping the $40,000 as a debt. But again, you did that to improve the value of the property and you're making more than enough cash flow to cover this $400 as well. And then in two to three years, what you do is something outstanding. And that's another tax hack that real estate investors use you know like numerous occasions i'm not a huge fan of it honestly but you know this is something that has worked for many many investors now let's say the outstanding balance on this particular house is three hundred fifty thousand dollars because we did a 20 percent down payment to start with uh let's say you know we have paid down only ten thousand dollars in three years which is not realistic but you know i'm just taking conservative estimates here we also had a forty thousand dollar line of credit that we took in order to do the renovations so we have about three hundred ninety thousand dollars of debt on this home the new value of this home, let's say it did not appreciate anything in three years. It's still $600,000 because we did renovations as well. The new loan that the bank will now give is $480,000. So you can take 80% of the new value, which is $480,000 uh, at 5%. Let's say the interest rate actually declined and now you're at 5%. Honestly, you can actually get, you know, close to 5% even today, but I'm just taking conservative estimates. You are able to now take, you know, after paying the $390,000 in loan, you are able to now take about $90,000, which is new loan, minus what you owe on the you know, last loan, you are able to refinance this house and take out $90,000 of tax-free money because this is debt. No one can tax you on this. And then you can invest this $90,000 into another property. Your cash flow has not actually changed a lot because now the interest rate has come down. The mortgage is now 2562. Your net operating expenses, including inflation and everything, has increased to $1,200. Your total expenses are about $3,700. The rent in year three is about $4,500 and you're still making $700 in cash flow in year three. Year four will be even higher and year five will again cross $1,000. And in all this, in year number three, this guy actually took out $90,000 thousand dollars of tax free money and maybe they invested in another property which is also cash flowing now in all this you might be asking what about this cash flow won't you be paying taxes on that i get this a lot but there's something called as 
CCA, which is Capital Cost Allowance. Now, not all properties are eligible for that, but this is something bizarre. Even though real estate appreciates, but for old properties, you can actually depreciate the asset because over time, the building is getting older. And therefore, you can depreciate a percentage of the building value every single year. And that amount can actually be deducted from your cash flow in order to pay less taxes. This particular screenshot is from Canada.ca, which is the official website. So this is in the tax code. But make sure that you are talking to your accountant if this property is eligible for this particular deduction or not. But that's how bizarre it is. And this is only in Canada. US is even better when it comes to depreciation. And that's the reason why I started investing in the US as well. Now, if you are someone who is wondering how do we get these amazing deals, you need to go to our value deals group. The link is in the description. And we send value deals in Calgary, Ontario and BC. Deals that cash flow, deals with which are under market value deals where you will make a profit for sure. And I personally vet all these deals and those deals are discussed in that WhatsApp group. Do join that WhatsApp group if you want access to it. Now, if you are someone who wants to start a business and save on taxes, next week I'll be coming up with a video on how to leave your nine to five job and how to think about starting your first business. Now, this particular presentation on leaving your nine to five job is actually a short version of my long call that I had the other day on Grow Nation. Now, if you don't know about Grow Nation, I would highly recommend that you go to my website and check it out. It's basically a small inner circle where all my clients, all my mortgage clients and real estate clients, they actually get on a group. Every month we do calls and discuss different ways of building wealth. Last month, it was options trading. This month, it was leaving your nine to five job and starting a business. We have about 300 members in this particular community. We have, you know, um, a couple of courses here. We have, you know, like job accelerator program, how to, you know, uh, get a six figure salary. This is there for free on my website as well. So if you want to go through a, a short version of this course, it's available on the website. Then there's another course, which is retirement planning, how to retire with $5 billion. It's an eight hour course uh, with my financial planner also in on this, my mentor also in on this. So it was really good. You know, we actually launched this last year, uh, but this is available to my clients for free. And then we have monthly mastermind where we talk about, you know, like financial planning. We talked about investing in the US. We talked about, you know, building business using social media. We talk about, you know, power of coaching. We talked about, you know, how to identify your biggest trends again us investing options trading and start a six-figure business this actually happened you know earlier this month and i'll actually be making a small presentation next week on youtube on this particular topic which is number eight on how to quit your nine to five job and start your business so do subscribe to the channel if you have not done that we'll see you in the next video bye bye